What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Will. First, because this is YouTube and anybody spots anything wrong, they're gonna say something about it. So we're just gonna get it out of the way. If you hear like a humming noise, that's the AC unit. And that's gonna stay on because it is hot in Florida. Just ridiculously hot. So my audio's fine, get over it, moving on. We're getting into the video now. Today we're talking about a cool update that should be coming to Photoshop pretty soon. Uh, you know what generative fill is. Well, this is opening up a lot of really cool uh, potentials in the editing world. And one of those are actions. Gen technically generative fill AI powered actions, which is freaking amazing. So the first thing is this is not in regular Photoshop yet. This is in Photoshop beta. So if you don't have Photoshop beta, simply go to your cloud, go to apps, go to beta and download Photoshop beta here. This is where you can use and try out all of the features that Photoshop is trying out to see if they're gonna go into the full Photoshop version. Now, this particular one, I believe, is going to go into the full version because it is really cool. So what is it? Let's get into Photoshop and I'm gonna tell you. So here we are in Photoshop beta and you can tell it's Photoshop beta because it says Photoshop beta. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would get really annoying if I kept doing that. Anyways, here's a photo that I had taken while I was out in Arizona. It's of me checking out the seven serenity pools. Now there's only three that you can see, but there are seven. One was very dehydrated, but it was very dry out there. Anyways, you know what an action is. And if you don't, well, an action is a feature that makes editing easier, especially on repetitive actions that you do on many photos you can record your own action. Let's say to sharpen, I have a sharpening action video, I'll link right here. It allows you to record an, a doing this, an action, so to speak, for lack of a better word, because it is an action, and then play it, and it makes it that much faster. It's much easier to show than it is to explain. So if you go here, you see this little button, it, show, it says actions. If you don't see this, go to window and go to actions, and it will open it up. Now this looks way different than it does in regular Photoshop. So let me switch it around here. Click these three dots and go to classic actions. Now this will probably look a little bit more familiar. And you see there's a bunch of actions. Now these simply do something. For example, if I press this, I don't know what this does. This is just Photoshop's action. And I'm gonna press play and it's gonna do something to the image. So here it created a layer, plaster is not available. Okay, this is, this is not a very good example. Um, okay, let's delete that and let's find something that works. Um, how about vignette selection? So we're gonna click, click vignette and press play. Okay, this is not working well in my favor here. Okay, um, let's do something completely different and completely ignore all of this. Basically, you click one, you press play, it does the motion of whatever you recorded in the first place. If you wanna see a whole video on actions, here's that video. So what is different in the actions now? Well, let's go back to these three little lines here and go back to actions. Now this gives you a prompt action, which means you can say, I want to do this and it will generate an action for you, which is really freaking cool. So for example, let's say we wanted to add more contrast to this image. So we're gonna say add more contrast, right? It's going to search and it's going to come up with actions. Now, a couple of things here, which is actually pretty neat. If you see this symbol here, the little icon with the little TV and the eye, that's preview. That means you can hover over these actions and you can preview them without actually doing them. It's kind of like hovering over presets when you're in Lightroom, seeing what it's gonna do and then not selecting it. Same exact thing. But some of these actions are hefty and they will, the preview will slow down your computer and it takes a while. So can you turn them off? Well, yes, yes you can. Click the three lines right here and uncheck preview on hover. Now they're not going to preview. So let's turn that back on and we're gonna hover over this. So this increases contrast, this adds strong contrast, this adds gentle contrast, this enhances contrast. You have all of these options, which is really freaking cool. But let's say we wanted to, um, add blue, let's something a little bit more complicated, add blue into the shadows. All right, really contrast it up. So you have a lot of different options here. There, there, here's one that says cool shadows and warm highlights. All right, so we highlight over this and boom, it adds quite a bit. So it put warmth in the highlights and it added shadows in, or it added cool tones in the shadows. 
Now it's pretty cool, but it's heavy handed. It's a lot of an effect. So then we go over to the opacity with it selected and let's do like 50%. Good. So now here's the before, here's the after, and it just adds a little bit more contrast into the image. Let's say we wanted to make me pop in there. So let's select here and do make subject pop. And again, it'll get results. Here's that make subject pop and let's see what it does. Good. And so here's the before. Here's the after. Now that did quite a bit and it's not that great. So again, it is still in beta, but not bad. You see the idea. So again, we would lower this opacity to 30% and just make it a little bit better. Now, a couple of other things you can do is you can apply this selectively to specific parts of the image. For example, let's say this medium vignette, right? If you click on these three dots, you can apply on subject or on just the background. So you can be selective where you apply this. Let's go to add strong contrast, but we only want to apply it to the background. So we select that and then it's going to apply just that strong contrast to the background and it eliminates having to mask out the subject on this. See, there we go. And obviously this image is not looking great. It's just giving you really, really good examples of what you can do with this, these new actions. Now, currently with this, you can't record or save any actions that is probably coming and you can't build them with the specific ones. It's, this is just for you to completely play around with and see how it's working. So that's kind of cool, but it isn't fully built out yet. And I feel like there's going to be a lot of improvements as they build this specific section of Photoshop because it's, it's really cool. It's going to make editing much, much faster, especially on certain things that you don't necessarily know how to do in Photoshop. You just type it in, boom, there you go. Now here's a cool thing that I really like actually. And I found this to be a problem that I ran into uh, on other actions, but it's the ability to undo something. Let's go into the classic actions here. Whoops. Classic actions and click the three lines and go to, um, playback options. At the bottom here, you'll notice history, create a single history state. What this means is let's say your action has lots of things that it does. If you have this checked, you play that action and then you undo it, it's going to remove all of it. The whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle, everything that you did in that action, it's going to remove it as one single item. But if you uncheck this, and then you play an action, it's going to remove it one step at a time, starting from the latest and going backwards. Let me just, let me show you what I mean. So let's go to playback options, uncheck this, press okay. And then we're going to apply, let's go back to our actions and let's just do, um, strong blur background. I don't know, something silly. Okay. So it's going to do all of this and this isn't on single history, right? So if we go to history, we see that it duplicated a layer, select subject, select inverse and deselect and then and gauge and burr and deselect. So it did all of that. So if I command Z and we look over here, it's going to go back each individual step. Whereas again, let's get back to here. Let's go to actions. Let's go to classic actions and let's select that again, playback options, create single boom, and then go back a lot of back and forth here until they get this merged. Uh, and then we're going to do another, um, uh, dot, 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 where to go blur background. We're going to do blur background. It's going to do its thing. And then if we go into history, you'll notice a single action blur background. So if we press command Z, it un undoes the entire thing. So that's a really cool feature that I like. I find the single history for action specifically is really, really beneficial but that's, you know, that's just how to change it and to each their own on the specific way they like it. And that's a basic overview of the new action system that is coming up. What do you think about the AI taking over everything? Is this kind of a thing? Is this going to be, is this, is this the new age? Are we in the new age? Let me know what you think about the new age, <laughs> but that's it. So hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Here's a couple of videos that I think you're going to enjoy. So click one of those and I will see you in the next video later.